Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome to another episode of This Week in Gaming. Starting off the news with Battlefield, currently in testing on CTE, the next patch for BF1 should bring some welcome changes to the game. DICE are adding a 0.3 second throw delay to all grenades. The frag grenade, stick grenade, impact, mini, and light anti-tank nades have had their blast radius reduced. All lethal nades, aside from gas, have had their detonation timers increased slightly. The resupply timers for nades have also been increased a little. Finally, players with smoke grenades equipped will get two of them when they spawn in instead of one. Hopefully these changes will make people consider how they use their grenades a lot more and help reduce the ever-present grenade spam. There's also going to be anti-aircraft cannon buffs and sniper rifles are going to become more powerful when used against uh, vehicles, I think specifically air vehicles. There should be some more bug fixes, UI improvements, also operations, joining operations should be more streamlined in the next big patch so people should be able to queue into them easier quicker um, and that's a really big update since operations is my favorite game mode and currently i just don't try and play it because of the matchmaking problems if you want the full patch notes there's a link in the description you can check out also in the description is a link to my video covering the new map dice is releasing in june for premium owners nivelle knights It'll be the first map in Battlefield 1, and so far it looks pretty decent, especially for players that enjoy trench combat. Valve have officially announced CSGO is coming to China. In doing so, they also confirmed a Source 2 port for the game, a new UI, and a new operation. The port and new UI don't have a release date yet, but the new operation should launch this summer. Valve also talked about their use of machine learning to combat cheating, basically anti-cheat AI. So that probably means improvements to Valve's anti-cheat system, VAC, will be coming soon. Chinese players get the game on April 18th. Valve also implemented some big changes to competitive matchmaking recently. The Negev, previously the game's most expensive weapon and most powerful LMG, has had a variety of tweaks made to it. Mechanically, it functions in a similar way to Battlefield 1's LMGs, where firing it for a few shots continuously turns into a super accurate gun at medium range. It's also now one of the cheapest weapons in the game at 2000. Valve said the price is temporary and was only done to encourage experimentation. Generally speaking, the community hasn't been too warm to the price drop. The changes to the Negev's firing mechanics alone were pretty substantial. Making it so cheap, even on a temporary basis, has a huge impact on the economic balance of matchmaking games. So Valve better get their data quick. Overwatch is having a new event. Uprising offers a new PvE game mode, Skins, Loot Crate Items, a modified version of the King's Row map, and touches on the lore of the game. The previous event, Year of the Rooster, introduced a Capture the Flag game mode that became a permanent addition to the game. So far, none of the PvE game modes have stuck around after their event ended. However, people seem to really like Uprising quite a bit. Considering Overwatch now has a proper server browser, I'd be surprised to see the game mode disappear once the event is over. The Uprising event ends on May 1st. Bethesda will let you play their upcoming sci-fi horror shooter Prey for free. Starting on the 27th, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One owners can play the game's first hour for free. The game officially launches on May 5th, so I'd say this is a pretty sweet deal. However, it is kind of a bummer that PC players won't get this same deal with their hands on time before the game launches. The devs who created Dishonored are also the ones making Prey, and while Dishonored 2 looked great, it had a variety of performance issues on all platforms. The lack of a PC demo is probably just a byproduct of not having a way to prevent people from abusing it. But it's also possible that maybe the PC version is just a buggy port that they don't want to show off. Reports of poor performance before the game is released could impact sales and this could be a way of preventing that. Now Middle Earth Shadows of War looks pretty darn epic. New gameplay showing off one of the big cities in Lord of the Rings, Minas Ithil has been released. For those of you who are into Lord of the Rings, you may know this as the Gondorian city that Sauron's forces overtake and turn into a military outpost for his army outside of Mordor. It's a big feature of the movies, books, and general lore of the universe. Getting to explore in Shadows of War is sure to be a cool experience. 
Now the best part of this is that the city will be overtaken as you play the game, transforming it from the pristine Minas Ithil to the grimy orc run Minas Morgul. The devs said every inch of the city, from its underground tunnels to the massive tower at its center, will be open to explore from the moment you step foot in the city. It features a variety of quests and mini objectives, such as coliseum style fighting arenas that are run by the orcs. Shadows of War launches on August 22nd for all platforms. An action-packed new trailer has been released for Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. It shows off some of the game's more wild takedowns, including a bullet that blows the heads off of enemies. Previous games in the franchise have been praised for their sniping mechanics, but also criticized for the lack of quality in other areas. The new game will have more ways of approaching missions, dynamic weather, and a day-night cycle. These improvements go a long way towards transforming the franchise from a niche sniping game into something that feels a bit more fleshed out. This week I covered the leaked Star Wars Battlefront 2 trailer. Today EA is set to reveal it properly during the 2017 Star Wars Celebration event. To catch it live, hit the link in the video description for the event's livestream. Also, if you've been living under a rock somewhere, the new trailer for The Last Jedi is out, and the new Star Wars Battlefront game is going to pull heroes from The Last Jedi, so just be prepared for that. Now, when it comes to multiplayer indie shooters, it doesn't get much bigger than Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. In just 20 days, the game has already sold over a million copies, but it is still an early access title that comes with all the baggage of being an unfinished game. Optimization, gameplay balance, audio, and more are all still issues that are being worked on. The first big performance patch is scheduled for release next week. Shortly after the game launched, players discovered a variety of tweaks that could be made to the Battlegrounds config files for an FPS boost and smoother performance. Unfortunately, some of those tweaks completely disabled terrain elements like trees, rocks, and bushes, giving players a huge and unfair advantage over others. To combat this, the devs have disabled any tweaks made to the config files. The downside are all the other tweaks, like extending your field of view, being able to turn off mouse smoothing, and the more minor performance enhancements are now disabled. Next week's patch is set to include an FOV slider, and the devs hope to include a mouth smoothing toggle as well. The interesting thing though is that the FOV slider will only adjust the field of view of the first person view, leaving the third person view locked into whatever it is by default. The upcoming patch will also include a new weapon. Players are speculating that it will be the Chris Vector and I think that's pretty likely based on the image that devs tweeted out showing off part of the rail system. If the Chris Vector comes into the game it could be one of the most powerful close quarter weapons as it fires the 45 ACP round and shoots at an incredible 1200 rounds per minute. Considering the somewhat realistic characteristics of the weapons in game this could be absolutely devastating. Respawn Entertainment published a new blog post outlining future DLC content for Titanfall 2. Between April and July, they'll be releasing two more multiplayer maps, two more live fire maps, a new Titan, and two more Prime Titans, Ronin and Tone. Respawn are promising even more content after this batch. Upcoming patches for the game will increase the max level cap to 100, introducing a new faction and marked for death game mode, among other things. What Titanfall 2 lacks in popularity, it is making up for in spades with solid gameplay and tons of free content. The standalone expansion for Uncharted 4 The Lost Legacy finally has a release date and price. The DLC launches on August 22nd for $39.99. People who bought the DLC Explorers Pack for the Digital Deluxe Edition will get the Lost Legacy for free. However, neither of those items are available for sale anymore. The Lost Legacy was originally planned as a DLC content for the base game. Naughty Dog eventually decided to make it a standalone experience. It will be their final entry in the series as the lead developer. Speculation suggests Sony will eventually continue the franchise with another developer. The final design of the Xbox One Scorpio probably won't be revealed until E3 this year, but Microsoft have sent images and technical speculations of its dev kit out to the media. 
Previous Xbox dev kits looked pretty similar to their consumer counterparts. The Scorpio obviously won't look identical to its dev kit, but the retail console is being designed to support conversion into a dev kit, so really there's no telling how different it will actually look at launch. The one thing we do know about the dev kit for sure is they're more powerful than the retail hardware, sporting 24 gigs of RAM, which is double the retail's hardware, a 1TB SSD, and a slightly more powerful GPU. These dev kits are no joke. Microsoft has also released the latest version of the Windows 10 operating system with the creator's update. It includes a new feature called Game Mode, a setting that prioritizes full screen games over other system tasks. This probably won't have a very big impact on high end systems, but it should be a pretty big performance boost to low end systems that don't have a lot of uh, extra CPU capacity to handle all those background tasks. Enabling this mode might give you a few more frames per second. Nintendo have officially killed the NES Classic Edition. Despite an incredible demand for the 30 game NES system, they will no longer be producing it. Nintendo have stated in the past that the Classic was never intended to be a long term item. The only reason they offered more than they originally intended was the sheer demand for it. The system was quickly hacked to enable loading more games and even Linux, which may be a factor in the discontinuation. Whatever the reason, I'm sure it worked out for Nintendo because they sold 1.5 million units in 2016 alone. Anyway, that wraps it up for today's episode of This Week in Gaming. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off. <laughs>